Hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to welcome you to Remnant International Church. As always, remnantinternationalchurch.com is our official website, and you can follow us on all social media platforms at Remnant International Church. So let's just usher in the presence of the Lord, because that's what it's all about. It's all about God, his presence, his tangible presence, shifting you from where you are to where he wants to take you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Lord, I bless your name this morning. I give you glory and honor, the glory and honor that is due you, Father. There is none greater, God. Lord, our job isn't our keeper. You're our keeper. Doctors aren't our healers. You are our healers, right? The government isn't our protection. You're our protection, Father God. So we just thank you this morning, God. We pray that you would move and shift in a miraculous way that the spirit of the Lord would rise up and overturn any opposition that's trying to infiltrate our life, whatever it is, if it's our mind, if it's our bodies, if it's our spirits, Father God, we pray even now that you just unleash your angels of warfare to go and take down every ungodly foe in Jesus' name. We decree that nothing shall come up against what God wants to do in our lives individually and even collectively. I praise you, Father. There is none like you in all the earth. There is none greater than you. We celebrate and we hail King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There is none greater than you. Hosanna, Hosanna. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We thank you that in a world with so much going on and things distracting us to the left and things trying to distract us to the right, that you would keep us grounded, that we would stay grounded in your word, that we would walk in your word, that we would walk in your precepts, that we will walk in what you've taught us to do and be as believers, Father God. Lord, we, we don't desire to bring Jesus to an open shame or to crucify him afresh, Father, as scripture says, but we desire for our actions to line up to what your word says they should be. Lord, we want to love like you, God. We want to give like you, Father. We want to care for those who are less fortunate just as you would. Your word says the least of them, right? Whatever you do to the least of them that you have done unto me. So we thank you, Father God. Lord, we pray even now as we surrender our hearts, our minds, our will and our emotions, Father, that you would transform us from the inside out, Father. We don't want to just pay lip service. We don't want to just look the part, Father God, but we want to be the part. We want the power backing us. We want all of heaven and your angelic host backing us, Father God, as we go and what you called us to do. We thank you this morning today, Father. Lord, for those who are less fortunate, those who maybe don't have a roof over their head, don't have food to eat, Father. Lord, we pray even now that your angels will begin dispatching what is needed, or Shende, to those who are in need. We pray that you would just give them revelation to agree with your word and believe for manifestation, believe for breakthrough, believe for whatever is needed, healing, health, sanity, Father. Lord, we know around the holiday times the enemy comes to try and mess with our emotions, especially when we've lost loved ones and they're no longer with us. Well, we pray even now that every distraction be broken, every tactic or trick of the enemy is defeated and overturned in Jesus' name. We decree healing in our mind, in our bodies, and even in our emotions, Father. So we're not just raging. We're not flaring up. We're not having ungodly outbursts, but we govern 
ourselves according to your word, your mandate, and what is expected of us as believers. We just thank you today, Father. We pray for the persecuted Christians, Father, those who have no way to get what they need. Father, we pray even now, God, that your peace would come upon them, that your love would come upon them, and that a reprieve would come upon them in Jesus' name. Father, I was just reminded earlier today when you said that you were stabilizing us, Father God. So through the ups and downs and highs and lows in our body, in our finances, and throughout the year, just things taking place, the up and down, we are thankful that your words have come to ground us and we believe that you are stabilizing us, Father. Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you for everything that you're doing and going to do. And we come to you in this prayer with an expectancy, Father God. We don't expect things to stay the same, but we expect you to shift things. We expect a manifestation. We expect breakthrough, and we expect glorious testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your manservant today, Pastor Calvin, as he brings forward this word today. We pray even now, God, that people would get breakthrough when they hear what's being shared, Father, that you would gird him up with angels on both sides. And we decree that no one listening to this broadcast will go away from it the same way they came in. Let them be changed. Let them be uplifted. Let them feel your tangible presence, Father. We just give you the glory, honor, and praise. And we pray even now that as he pours out this morning, Father, that you would just refill him, that you would keep refilling him until he overflows in Jesus' name. I just thank you and I praise you. And without any other delays or announcements, I'm just going to turn this over to Pastor Calvin, just prepare in your hearts and minds to receive what's being shared. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Father, we come and just having a little talk with you, Lord God. Coming, Lord God, to be in a right mind frame, Lord God, for this morning, Lord God, for your word, Lord God, to be in your presence, Lord God. Father, we're asking for forgiveness for any sin, any trespass, anything, Lord God, that would hinder us in our relationship with you, Lord God. We want to be in a right standing, in a right place, Lord God. We want to be able to fellowship with you. We want to be able to hear you, Lord God. So, Father, forgive us for any sin, any trespass, Lord God. Father, I pray that I decrease and that you increase, Lord God, that this word, this message would go out, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to all grow closer, to help us to recognize, Lord God, that you are a wonder-working God and there's nothing too hard for you, Lord God. Father God, I just thank you and praise you, Lord God. To you, Lord God, we give all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this morning. Amen. Good morning, family. Just going to get right into this and just start this. wanted to talk about grace this morning. God's grace. And I was in uh, the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, and it was talking about the unforth 
unforced rhythm of grace. It was talking again about the unforced, unforced rhythm of grace. And when I was thinking about grace, it just had me, my spirit just looking it up. I mean, everybody has a understanding about what grace is. And it was talking about an unmerited divine assistance that comes to humans for their regeneration. And that regeneration is a spiritual rebirth, right? It should be a revival, right? It should be something that comes that has us not doing the things that we used to do, that we want to be a new creature in Christ, that it's a continuing cleansing. It's a, a, a moving out the old and bringing in the new. It's something that we willfully want to do. Almost like a spring cleaning, right? But it's a spring cleaning for our fresh for our spirit which continually happens right it's sanctification and that sanctification is to make us holy like God is holy like when we lift up prayers and saying he is holy Lord God you are holy you are holy that's what the angels continually sing and that's what we as a people have to strive to be we have to understand that God has set us apart Heart is a sacred people to lift him up in praise and worship at all times, not for God to be praising or worshiping, worshiping us. We give God the glory in all things that we account that we do, right? We are consecrated people. We are purified. We have to be free from sin. We have to make productive of or be conducive to God's spiritual blessings, right? So that's talking about, again about having the relationship with our Father so that we can receive these things. Some of us don't even understand that when we have that relationship and we continually building or we're asking God for different things and things, but if we don't have the relationship to hear from Him, we won't even know that God has already set them apart. He set them apart even before we were created. They were there willing, waiting for us to pick it up. It's almost like going to a supermarket and doing your shopping and picking up the things that you need for the fight ahead or, or for the storm coming, whatever it is and stuff, that we have to have that relationship so that we can acquire these tools to be who God has called us to be. That's talking about a virtue that comes from God, a virtue from that comes from God. That's talking about a state of sanctification being enjoined through divine assistance, knowing always that he's willing and able to assist us in any situation, that there's nothing too hard for God. All we have to do is have enough faith to believe that he can bring us through. I understand that each of us go through different things, especially when we get up there in age, but even as the youngsters and stuff. So whatever it is, it's just a faith test. It's just a faith test to understand and stuff like that, that, listen, I have to trust God and no matter what I'm going through, no matter what's happening and stuff, I'm going to trust God to bring us through. Me, bring us through, right? We All we have to do is remember Job and the different things that he lost, right? Material things, mostly except for his family and things, but they were material things. And even when his friends were speaking nonsense that he didn't really want to hear, he had to just Listen, I'm going to still trust in God. And that's what it is. It's that unforced rhythm of grace. It's faith. It's trusting God to bring us through it because God's continually working on our behalf so that we don't get left behind, that we have a place with him, right? And it's pondering God's grace, right? And asking, do we understand it to be an, a spontaneous gift from God to his people, right? It's generous. It's free and totally unexpected. 
and undeserved, really, right? It takes the form of divine favor, of love, of a clemency, and a share in the divine life of God. It's an attribute of God that is most apparent in the salvation of sinners. Are we a graceful people, right? When people see us, can they see those words that I just shared, right? Is it that totally unexpected and undeserved form of divine favor which comes from God? Is it a love within us that comes from God? That's what we need to be. Spontaneous to show who we are. Our sons and daughters of the Most High God, right? That was a definition, right? And in Matthew 11, he was saying, Then he began to denounce the people in the cities in which most of his miracles was done, because they did not repent and change their hearts and lives. And this is Jesus saying, Woe, judgment is coming to you, Corazine. Woe to you, Bathsheba, Bethsada, for if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, cities of the Gentiles, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Their hearts would have been changed and they would have, ha they would have expressed sorrow for their sin and rebellion against God. So what Jesus is saying here and stuff, he performed all these miracles and all these different things in Chorazin and Beth Bethsaida, I guess it's called, and they didn't understand, they didn't get it and stuff. All these different things, he still didn't get it. And he's like, woe to you. It's like after a while and stuff, you want to be doing certain things and you want people to get it and stuff. It's in the walk. It's in his speech. It's in his actions. He's doing everything to help the people to get it, but they don't want to get it. So he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for you, these pagan cities of Tyre and Sidon, on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, are you to be exalted to heaven for your apathy and unresponsiveness? You will descend to Hades, the realm of the dead, for if the miracles done in you have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. See what he was saying and stuff? All these different miracles that Jesus was performing, that he was trying to get the people to understand and stuff and come and be a part of his family. If they had done it in Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff, they'd still be here. But this is their lot in life now because they choose to not follow him, right? He said, for your apathy and unresponsiveness, you will descend to Hades, the realm of the dead. We pray that that never becomes anyone's portion in life. If they don't wait to the last minute thinking, okay, I got a time. If Jesus said that I can I'll repent at the last minute, if I something happens to me and stuff, I'm going to repent. I'm going to ask him for my forgiveness and everything. Yeah, probably he'll probably forgive you and everything else and stuff, but you want to have the relationship on an ongoing basis. There's different things that we face 
on an everyday basis, continually. And we want to have that favor, that understanding, that relationship with our Father so that when we go through these things, our faith will bring us through. That no matter what may come our way, our faith, Faith will bring us through. We have to be receptive to our Father at all times and in every situation. I don't care what it is, what any doctor say, what anybody says, whatever you're going through and stuff, just have a little faith. Just have faith to look to our Father for the answers, right? He said, but I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. And at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I openly and joyfully acknowledge your great wisdom that you have hidden in these things, these spiritual truths, from the wise and intelligent and reveal them to the infants, the new believers, to those seeking God's will and purpose. So he's saying, yeah, all of those with all the, the knowledge and understand and, and thinking they have the understanding, they don't really sometimes get it. I'm not saying everybody and stuff, right? I'm just reading from what he's saying here, right? He's saying, He's praising God and stuff, right? And joyfully acknowledging him and recognizing him and his great wisdom and saying that how he has hidden these spiritual truths from people who aren't in a relationship with him, aren't really seeking his face, aren't really connected to the Father, right? But he said the new converts, right? The new believers, right? Those seeking God's will and purpose will come to understand what he is saying, right? He says, yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father. And no one knows and accurately understand the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to reveal to him. Right? So Jesus is saying that nobody knows God but him. And that's because it's the three in one, right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they have that relationship, that connection. That's a Father and Son. That's Him always seeking. That's Jesus always walking away and spending time away. Listen, I got to have a, a talk with, our, with the Father and stuff. It's the same as if we were here, right, and uh, we get a phone call, right, and I got to step away from whatever I'm doing with a group of people and, and handle that fo certain phone calls, right? But when Jesus does it and stuff, he's connected. He's being reestablished with the Father. He's getting the grace. He wants to hear what's my next marching orders, whatever it is and stuff, right? And he's saying that the only way that we can come is in his word and stuff. It said it right here. To anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to reveal to him. The only way to get to the Father is to go through Jesus, right? So we don't recognize who he is and everything that he's done for us, how he's, we're connected with him, how his Holy Spirit resides in us and helps us through situations. How can we connect and be with our Father? We got to come to Jesus first, right? That's like us, uh, I think of it almost as uh, children, right? We're playing on the playground or whatever and stuff and G with Jesus and stuff. And we come to know and we good, right? And he invites you to his home and stuff. And you get to meet his father. That's the way the same thing in our relationship with God, right? It's through Jesus, right? He said he paid the ultimate price. He did it all for us and stuff. We have to understand and know what he's done for us. And that's why we got to continue to think about what are we doing for our father? Are we in the right place, in the right mindset so that we can hear and do what he's calling us to do? continually looking to hear from us, to spend time with us, just to get away and have a little talk with our Father, right? 
but it's got to come through Jesus, right? We got to establish a relationship. We got to know who he is. We got to honor him for what he's done and his sacrifice and continually working on our behalf, right? Then we get the introduction, right? If it's his will. And you're not doing it just so that you can get that introduction with God and stuff. You're not trying to do it on a sneak tip or trying to be sly about it. You want to have that relationship with Jesus, right? He paid it all. He went to the cross for us. I just talk about me, a sinner like me and stuff. People think we're perfect and, and things like that or, or striving for, for, for perfection and stuff. When there's no such thing, that only comes from the Father and stuff. All we can do is to try to be our best and, and learn from what Jesus did. And, or, and I said it before, right, all the time, you're asking him what he's doing, and he's telling us, I'm about my father's business. I'm about my father's business. I'm about my father's business. Are we about our father's business? You think about that grace, that mercy, that love, that sacrifice that Jesus went to the cross, took it all, and I always remember everything he went to even before he went to the cross. I mean, that alone was, should have been enough and stuff like that, but then the humiliation and everything else and dragging that big heavy thing through the streets and stuff, knowing that you're going to be nailed to it for things that you haven't even done. And we can't recognize him for who he is and just thanking him and praising him and just lift him up and praise and just understanding and stuff about the relationship, our responsibility and stuff, the real love, where it comes from and stuff. Real love is a sacrifice stuff for things that we haven't, you haven't even done, but taking it, taking it because he loves us. Because he continually loves us. Even the things we do, he still loves us, right? Even the decisions we make, he still loves us. Even when we walk away, he still loves us, right? But we need to get right with him. He's not going to love us for the things we do. He loves us because we take the time to have a relationship, right? To come to be with him, right? To come to share, to be in his midst, to hear that which he is asking us to do for his kingdom. Not lifting us up higher than he is and stuff. Not about a, a title or anything else, just a relationship, to equip us to do the will of the Father, right? And 28, it said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened. And it's talking about by religious rituals that provide no peace. It's saying being burnt out by religion, and I will give you rest refreshing your souls with salvation, right? He said, come to me, all you are wor weary and heavy, heavily burdened and stuff. It's like, and he's talking about the religion thing too and, and their rituals and stuff. And we spoke about it before, about the rituals and the re religion part and stuff. When he just keeps saying, have a relationship. It's all about a relationship. It's all about having a relationship with Jesus where you just have a conversation, you know? It's almost like when people spend all this money going to see a, a, a counselor. What did I, they call them? Counselors, right? They To talk to them and stuff. And, and just through the conversations or whatever and the drugs, sometimes they prescribe some of them and stuff. Then they say they feel better and they're able to cope. But if you come into Jesus and having a relationship with him and laying all your burdens down, he takes them all away. He takes the weight off of your shoulders. If you really come to him and really want to know him and stuff, you come to Jesus and then he will relieve you of those burdens. If you understand the religious thing and stuff, they can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. I don't follow from a religious perspective. I follow from the relationship 
relationship perspective, and I'm going to point you to Jesus. I'm always going to point you to Jesus. Yes, we'll keep lifting you up in prayer. If you've already taken the time, first thing we ask that you pray and stuff. When you pray, we stand in agreement with the prayers, dependent upon the prayers that you're lifting up to our Father. And in you and creating that relationship and things, miracles start happening, right? There's nothing too big for Jesus, right? All you have to do is have a relationship. Trust in him. Come to know him for who he is. We invest all these time and energy and money in, in trying to look a certain way to have different relationships with different people when we can't even do it for Jesus who paid the price and paid it all and continually working on our behalf so that we would have a place in the kingdom, so that our sins be thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. But we forget about him, right? Because we have these different things that we want to work on, different things that we want to accomplish, forgetting about his grace, his mercy, thinking of forgetting about the price he paid in full, as we continually say, He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Not me, from Cal not Calvin, but Jesus, right? He's saying, learn from me, following me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you'll find rest. You'll find a renewal in your spirit. You'll find a blessed quietness in your soul, in your spirit. For your souls. Because he said, for my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. Right? It's that unforth, forth. I don't know what's wrong, wrong with this word this morning. Unforced rhythm of grace. That rhythm of grace is coming to understand that Jesus is always working on our behalf, right? He's asking right now and stuff, where are we in our relationship? There's responsibilities and things that we need to do as people of God. All you have to do is watch the news and stuff like that and seeing all the different things going on. But if we have in a relationship with God and all these different cities all over the world can lift up prayer so that whatever he's telling us in that situation and stuff, we can change the situation around. We can do it. But we got to have enough faith to do it. We got to have faith that if Jesus give you the power to heal, that you can just speak it in the name of Jesus, that they're not coming to thank you, but they're thanking God for blessing you with this to do his will. Whatever's going on, wherever, I thank him for the grace to wake up each morning. I thank him for the grace for this call to ministry. I thank him for the grace and saving me for 60 years and stuff, still moving, still kicking. I thank him for my job. I thank him for my wife. I thank him for my family. I thank him for my daughter and granddaughter. I thank him for my son and his family. I thank him for everything, even for an opportunity right now to share. I thank him for the connection with other ministries where this home-based ministry can connect to two other ministries and share word where we can come together and work together as one by God's grace and mercy to do the will of God. That is nobody pushing forward to, to be on the top and stuff like that. It's just about coming together that Jesus be glorified in everything we do. And that's what it is in a, in a nutshell, right? That our Father be glorified in everything we do. So you just think about some of the things you're doing right now, right? 
Is God being glorified in those things? Does he get the glory? Or are you just saying, this is just my time now again and stuff like that. I'm going to do this now and stuff. Well, okay, after I get this done and stuff like that, then I'll go back and, and do it, right? Or you're thinking he may not know about it. And you're talking about, uh, you're talking about God not knowing. Just think about it. Those secret things, those things done in secret and stuff, he already knows. These messages, these teachings, this that we do comes to share to say, listen, there's a time to put away these childish things, right? And grow up and put on your man pants and stuff. Put on whatever we got to do and stuff like that to be who God has called us to be. Jesus paid an ultimate price for you and me. And it's time we start acknowledging it. It's time we start having that connection. It's time to break through, to move past the things that are hindering us. And the things that are hindering us is not having that intimate relationship with our Father. It's just being able, just even as I started and stuff, when uh, speaking in tongues, it's not me about bragging about I can speak in tongues or anything else. That's just what I was doing even before I started the, the sermon or anything. It's me setting an atmosphere. It's me just, it's the Holy Spirit within me connecting and wanting to have that conversation with God so that if there's something extra that he needs me to share here, it's shared. I was just talking about the rhythm of God's grace. The rhythm of God's grace. So again, no matter what we go through, understand God's grace and mercy is at hand. All we need to do as Christians is to trust him in any situation. Trust him that he'll bring us through, but have the relationship first. Don't just... Uh, thinking that he's gonna, it's going to happen and stuff. It's about building a relationship first. Build the relationship. And if you're saying, okay, I already have a relationship, what relationship is more important to you than the relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? With the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's when you can call upon him in any situation. And I'm talking from experience. Again, I'm 60 years old. I can't even share everything that God has done and brought me through. Undeservedly. There's nothing that we can do that gives us enough grace that he would say, okay, Calvin's so good or whatever and stuff like that. Like he walks on water and stuff that I got to bail him out of this situation. No, it don't work that way. God's grace and mercy. It's because he loves us. He doesn't love me any more than he loves you. He loves us. Jesus didn't come for one specific set of people or anything else. He came for each and every one of us that we may receive the grace to be saved by knowing what he went through. So if what Jesus went through is much harder than anything that any of us would ever go through, and he never sinned once, can we at least work to be like him, that our Father may be glorified. We just want our Father to be glorified in everything we do. Father God, I just thank you and praise you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. We thank you most of all, for your son, Jesus Christ, and his saving grace, Lord God. 
We thank you for Jesus this morning, Lord God, for without him, Lord God, we wouldn't even be here, Lord God. We'd be long gone and stuff. And who knows what would be happening right now, Lord God. But because of Jesus stepping up to the plate and said, I'll go for them, Lord God, and did and went through every situation, Lord God, and did it according to your perfect will and way, Lord God, and rose up, Lord God, and and, and instilled in men and women, Lord God, that which we need to do, how we need to be, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you and lift you up now this morning in Jesus' name, Lord God. Father, we ask that your will be done in every situation, Lord God. Father, we have loved ones that are going through, Lord God. We pray that in the midst of this situation, Lord God, that their faith never wavers, Lord God, that you would never, Lord God, put more on anyone, Lord God, that they can handle, Lord God, that they would always be able to turn to you and your will and your way, Lord God, knowing that they can open up your book, Lord God, your Bible, Lord God, at any time, Lord God, and seek your face, that they can come down on bended knees, Lord God, and have talk, just talking, having a conversation, Lord God, with you, Lord God, that anywhere they are, Lord God, that they can be in your midst, Lord God. Father, we lift your sons and daughters up to you now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we pray now, Lord God, that they will walk away from their selfish ways, Lord God, and want to be more in tune with you, Lord God, that they would come to understand what real love is instead of searching this earthly lust, Lord God. Father, I just thank you and praise you for every lesson learned, every mountain climbed, Lord God, that the only way I'm still standing after 60 years, Lord God, is because of your grace and mercy, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'm always leave you with Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding, and in all your ways, know, recognize, acknowledge Jesus, and he will direct and make straight your path. God bless you.